Pedals are one of the things on a bike that are actually taken for granted, but they're very important to get right. And the reason for that is the fact that they're your major contact point, but also they dramatically change the way the bike rides and how you feel on that. At GMBM, we're supported by Crank Brothers, which works out pretty well for us because they make flat pedals and clipless pedals. So Blake loves the flats. Personally, I'm a clip sort of fan and it generally suits the way we ride. But here behind me, I've got a whole bunch of different pedals and shoes. And I'm gonna walk you through the best way to select the right pedal for you. So your first question you need to ask yourself is, are you gonna be running clips or flats? So flat pedals come on most bikes as stock and they're the pedals that you're likely to use to develop your skills as a rider. Now the reason for that is you can just get on the bike and ride them in any shoes, pair of trainers, walking boots, whatever and you're gonna learn your fundamental riding skills. That's stuff like the bunny hop, so you really understand how the bike reacts off-road. And quite often, people will progress through to clipless pedals. But it's not always like that. Some people choose to stay on flat pedals because it suits the way they want to ride the bike. And what I mean by that is that freedom, that sort of aggressive style where you can chuck your feet out in the corners and generally not feel like you're part of the bike too much. Look at Sam Hill, for example. So ex downhill World Cup racer, and he's now the 2017 Enduro World Series champion. And he did that on flat pedals, which is quite unusual because you'll find most of that field raced on clipless pedals because they want to reduce the fatigue to your body, which I'll explain to you in a little while, and also make the most of being able to pedal as hard as they can off-road. So Sam's one of those sort of anomalies in the mountain biking world that proves that it's down to his riding style and what he wants to do. But don't let that put you off from riding clips or flat pedals. You've got to make the right choice that suits you. Flat pedals really offer you the ability to have a bit more freedom on your bike, and they're not quite as scary to ride as clipless pedals. You can attack a rock garden knowing if stuff goes wrong, you can get off the bike pretty easily. And the same with slippery, rowdy conditions, you can dab a foot quite happily. And the final thing with flat pedals is they're also really well suited to people who like jumping. People like Blake. Clipless pedals are the natural progression that most riders will take once they've learned to ride flat pedals properly. Now the benefits with riding clipless pedals are quite obvious really. You're gonna start with a proper cycling shoe and what that means is it's gonna have a stiff sole on there which means your power transfer straight to the pedal is significantly improved over a flat pedal shoe which is gonna be a lot more flexible. It has to be flexible with a flat pedal obviously to grip on the pedal but you don't need that because you've got a retention device that keeps your shoe in place on that clipless pedal. Now one of the other significant advantages of being clipped into a pedal is the fact that you can pull backwards and pull up on that pedal. Now you won't necessarily use that when pedaling, but the fact that you can spin a perfectly efficient circle is much better use of how you use your legs when you're cycling. Now there's also several other advantages with clipping into a pedal, and that's the fact that you can be a lot lighter on the bike. If you're riding a flat pedal through a rock garden, for example, to keep your feet on the pedals and stop them sort of jumping off, you're gonna ride with quite a bias towards the back of the bike, and that means your back wheel's gonna take a lot of punishment. When you're riding with clipless pedals, you don't actually have to hold your feet on the pedals anymore, so it frees you up. It also means you hold onto the bars less tight, so that means you're gonna get less issues of arm pump and hand pain. So there are significant advantages to running clipless pedals, but it does make it harder in selecting which one works for you. But as a downside, clipless pedals do require a lot more commitment for you, the rider. And what this means is if you're tanking it into like a rock garden or a really wet slippery section, Whereas on the flat pedals, you can let it all hang out and it's easy to jump off the bike. You have to be a lot more committed in your line choice and the way you ride the clipless pedals. You can pop out of them quite easily when you need to in a crash situation, but it can be very intimidating until you're used to them. So for picking a flat pedal, there's a few things you need to take into account. Of course, your budget is gonna be the first thing you need to worry about. So a cheaper pedal like this is actually die cast. So it's a lot cheaper than like the machined aluminium ones and the more high-end pedals you get on the market. As a downside, it's slightly heavier, but it still functions like a flat pedal should. And this particular one does have a slight advantage over its big brother pedal. So they're both by Crank Brothers, but you'll see that the Q factor is slightly different on these. And what I mean by the Q factor is the distance of the pedal cage from the crank. So with this pedal, the more budget one, your foot is actually spaced out further from the crank. So if you like to move your foot around a lot on the pedal, or if you have big feet, this is really gonna suit you. Now you also might consider pedal size. As you can see, there's various different options available on the market, but Crank Brothers have got a little trick up their sleeves. They actually make a pedal in two different sizes. And what that suits is simply people with big or small feet, 
or perhaps you actually like the feeling of a bigger pedal or a smaller pedal. Now something else to consider with pedals is the thickness of them. Note how thick this pedal is and note how thin this pedal is. The thin pedal is going to give you a lot of good feel because your lower centre of gravity is going to make you feel more stable on the bike and if you like to pedal through stuff that's rocky and rooty you're less likely to strike it on the ground. As a downside, because of the design of this, it's got a very narrow Q factor and it's based right up against the crank. So if you've got big feet or you do like to move your feet around on the pedal, it's not going to feel very comfortable for you and you would be better for something like this. Now of course pedal choice is down to you and how you ride the bike, but just take into account a few different factors there. So the final thing you want to take into account with flat pedals is how much grip they have. Now you might think that you want the ultimate grip and your foot not to move anywhere, that sort of vice-like feel, but actually some riders don't want that. Blake, for example, because he's really into his jumping, he likes to move around on the pedal and he runs the shorter pins on his pedals, so he's got the freedom to do that. Myself, if I ride flat pedals, I don't want my foot going anywhere, I want it to be stuck on there. So you can tune the way the pedal feels by using larger pins, especially around the outside and use shorter pins on the inside. Or, for example, on this DMR pedal, it doesn't have that option, so your foot naturally sits in, so it's quite concave. So there are many different options with flat pedals out there. Just take the time to consider those things that are important to you before you buy some. So now let's look at picking a clipless pedal, and there's a little bit more to this than there is picking a flat pedal. So firstly, you need to kind of decide what sort of rider are you? Are you an XC rider? Are you a trail sort of enduro rider? Or are you a downhill rider? And then you want to consider the sorts of footwear that you're likely to wear. So if you're an XC rider, you ignore the fact that this is a winter shoe, it's an XC shoe. You're going to have a very, very stiff sole on there. It's all about pedaling efficiency. And to work with that, you really want a small, compact pedal. So that's something that needs to be taken into account. For your average trail rider, you're going to be looking at something that's probably on similar lines, but it's going to have a wider sole, a bit better off the bike, and you've got a bit more freedom in the type of pedals you choose. If you're more biased towards enduro style of riding, you're going to have a much heavier duty lugged outsole. And it doesn't limit you in the pedals you use. For example, you don't want to use this on the bigger downhill style pedals because you're going to have too much grip. It's actually going to hinder the way you clip out of the pedal. And then there's the downhill option. And the downhill option, you want the flattest, smoothest sole possible to make perfectly with that big pedal surface. Let's take a look at the pedals first and we can show you exactly how they interact with the shoes. So for the XE riders, the fact that you've got a really stiff sole shoe means you don't need a bigger base pedal for all that feel because you won't feel it. So you can make the most of having a very small case pedal. Now this isn't the smallest out there, there are smaller, but this is a good sort of comparison of what people would run. It's nice and small, it's got shoulders just on the outside of the clip retention system that sit on the shoe nicely. Gives you the support that you need, it's very minimal, not subject to getting clogged up the mud, and does the job that an XC rider would need. So for the all-mountain, trail and enduro riders, you're kind of split with the options available to you. So first up, you've got a lighter option, and this is more like a beefed up XC style pedal. So it has the same small cleat retention system on there, it has the wings around the front to help protect the pedal from rock strikes and ground strikes, but also it gives you a bit more stability on that pedal. So it suits using a slightly softer soled shoe that does flex a bit more than your regular XC shoe. The other option at the other end of the spectrum is a slightly bigger pedal. Now this looks like the downhill style pedals out there that are based on flat pedals, but it's a lot more compact. So it does give you the support and the advantages of a downhill pedal in a smaller, lighter package. Now these make really well with the aggressive enduro style shoes and kind of give you the best of both worlds. So this is a trail focus shoe. It does have similarities with an XC shoe in the fact that the upper is quite light on it. It's got a retention device here. You've got your cleat mechanism on the bottom here and you've got quite a wide sole, so it's good for off the bike. But also this wide sole has got some quite flat sort of sections here that make really well with bigger pedals. So you have the advantage of being able to use a smaller pedal or go for the bigger pedal. You don't really get that with the XC shoes. At the other end of the spectrum you have the slightly gnarlier enduro focus shoe. So again you've got a retention system on the top here to dial in the fit. You've got a much sturdier toe box heel box, ankle protection on the inside, and of course, the really aggressive sole for off the bike. Now these sort of shoes don't work too well with lighter, smaller pedals. You really want to have the advantage of using a big pedal for all of that support on there. And finally, there is the downhill pedal option. 
And the thing with these is they closely resemble a flat pedal if you look at these in sort of shape and style, but they have a retention system based in the middle. And the reason they base these like a flat pedal is so you can have that full control of the bike. You can lean on all parts of that pedal. And if you don't clip in properly, you do have that cage to rest on. They're also incredibly strong, which is a significant factor for downhill riding, especially with the low bottom bracket heights of the bikes and the sort of terrain that you ride them on. But as a downside, you do have to have a slightly different shoe to ride them on. Of course, any of these shoes with the right cleat on them will work properly on, on this retention system, but they won't feel right. What you're looking for ideally is a shoe with a completely flat sole, more like a trainer. And the way this works with this clip mechanism is the fact that it's gonna feel like running a flat pedal, but you have the advantages of being clipped in on there. So the other thing you need to consider with your pedals is do you wanna have something with little or no float, or do you want a lot of float? And what I mean by float is the movement that the cleat has within the retention device before you disengage. So the Shimano pedal, for example, has barely any float. It feels like you're locked into the pedal when you clip in, and as a result of that, you know the instant you're gonna clip out just by moving your ankle. Now, some riders love this feeling, whereas other riders cannot stand it. Crank Brothers, they have the opposite. They have a lot of float available to you, 15 or 20 degrees, depending on which way you run the cleats on your soles. Why would you want all of that float? Well, firstly, it's very comfortable. It means you're not sort of restrained to a single position once your clip's onto that pedal. And also, it does enable you to move around. Now, the aggressive enduro riders and downhill riders love this in particular, because it means they've got the freedom to move on the pedal without having to clip out. That's especially good for rock gardens and aggressive riding. So hopefully this video has been useful for you and giving you some insight into the types of flat pedals available to you and the different types of clipless pedals on the market. Now in both clips and flats, there's various different price points available, all the way from budget up to high end. But you've got to bear in mind with clipless pedals, you have to make a bit more of an investment because you're going to require the shoes as well. But we would recommend, even if sticking with flat pedals, you get yourself a decent set of flat pedal based shoes and you've got a good package for riding your bike. So if you want to see Blake riding clipless pedals for the first time as a flat pedal rider, click up here for that video. It's pretty entertaining and it's going to give you a bit more information on the actual mechanisms of the pedals and how they work. And if you want to find out the right type of grease and lube to use on your bike and where you should use it, click down here. As always, click on the little globe here to subscribe and if you like the video, give us a thumbs up.